this is my dream. To play with complex patterns emerging from something simple using natural selection. But how can I get this? Starting from this. To figure it out, I first need to know, can I control evolution? To be more specific, can I control evolution in a simulated ecosystem while still obeying the rules of natural selection? If I cannot control evolution in my simulation of alien plants, it will never become a proper game. You may be thinking, because I'm the creator of the simulation, I am like a god. And I can change anything I want. But I will be twisting the rules only to generate a predefined outcome, trading of emergence and diversity in favor of quick results. Alien plants is a simulation of multiple plants evolving together. They don't have a specific goal and will only adapt to factors in the environment. So they want to look like this or this. Honestly, I have no idea how they're going to look like. This sense of discovery is what makes this project so appealing to me. But it's also making the whole process a lot more difficult. <laughs> this is Leo. He is the creator of the Vivids, another evolution simulation based on natural selection. Instead of plants, his ecosystem is full of bibits, and they evolve to survive. We are both facing similar challenges due to the difficulty of getting interesting results. In the bibits too, like, by default, the bibits are pretty bad. Like, yeah. most bibits won't survive at the start, so I have to spawn them in continuously. That's the thing with uh, evolution and yes. those kind of complex systems. You have to try it out to, to know. Leo is right. It's time to start doing some experiments. The goal is to see evolution in action. So I will force the plants to adapt to a very specific goal, but it must be done within the context of the ecosystem. I am creating some selective pressure to guide evolution, but it must still work under the rules of natural selection. So I'm thinking of some kind of artifact like a tower that shoots a laser to destroy any plant that doesn't have a pink flower. Yes, we are going for something simple. The color of the flower is the perfect trait for this experiment. Color is very easy to observe, and in the current model, the flower color has no function. I don't want to make it more difficult for the plants to survive. The laser tower has a target color, and it will kill any plant with a flower of a different color. But I need to define a tolerance range, otherwise flowers will need to be the exact same color. This sphere in the middle is the target color, and all the colors you see around are within the tolerance range. So now the laser tower will kill any plant that is outside the tolerance range. To configure the tower, you can use the controls to set the tolerance and the radius of influence. But the question still remains. Will I be able to control evolution with this tower? To find the answer, I'm going to perform two experiments. For the first experiment, I want to find what kind of setup I have to create to evolve pink flowers. This is kind of the baseline experiment of how the tower can control evolution. The second experiment is a challenge for the plants to cross a field full of towers selecting for different colors. So what are the predictions, Leo? The colors would need to overlap a little bit in at least the tolerances. If you survive in the white tower, then you would probably survive in the second tower, but not another one that's connected to, to this one. Okay, so this is a summary of our predictions. Before I reveal them, if you want to play along, pause the video and try writing your own predictions in the comments. And the first one is a lot of seeds will die. This is already established. We know they need time to adapt. We don't know which colors will get connected first. 
we want to know if the plants will get to the black tower by connecting the different towers. Towers have to overlap because otherwise there will be no evolutionary path between one color and another. It will be easier for plants to move to a similar color. I may need to tilt the whole terrain because, as I said, they are mostly affected by gravity. It's gonna be very cool, we don't know <laughs> exactly how or why. And there will be a lot of grey colors because grey is the color that is in the middle of the color space, so it's the color that is mm, closest to any other color. And this is the exact setup for the first experiment. After multiple tests, this is what I decided was the best way to go. The landscape is a big ball because the main factor that influences plant propagation is gravity. I want the plants to move toward the center where there are three towers. There, in the center, I have created the three areas of influence of different size and tolerance. This way, plants can get pinkier in smaller steps instead of having to mutate directly into the perfect pink. They could still become pink by pure chance, but it would probably take more time. And these are the results. By looking at this time lapse, it's clear something is happening. We can see some pink flowers appearing. But let me explain how it went exactly with the help of this graph. Here we can see the number of pink plants over time as well as other color plants. I'm considering every plant alive even if the flower is still not visible. I can see three major changes happening in these graphs. In the first part, there are a lot of plants because I just created them to populate the terrain. But most of them are dying as we can see the population decreasing. During this part of the simulation, plants are mostly trying to survive most of them are not viable right away. Also during this part of the simulation, pink plants appear to take a lead at some point. But this is just because the laser tower is not shooting pink followers right away, so they get to live and reproduce a little bit more until their problems with adaptation to basic survival start to appear. This bump here may just represent the one extra generation of pink plants. Remember that the laser tower kills the plants before they spawn a new seed and a lot of plants are viable in the short term and are still able to generate at least one seed, also it may not live for long. For comparison, this is a population graph for another simulation with no towers at higher resolution. This first part here is me spawning the initial seeds, then, as expected, the population goes down until getting to an equilibrium. So this is what we are seeing here. After that point, pink flowers do start to appear more and more. So maybe I can control evolution after all. In this graph it may seem like it's not by much, and they are still less than when the simulation started, but if we instead show pink plants as a percentage of all plants, the difference is clear. Pink plants are taking over. But then there is the third part of the graph. At this point I will be expecting them to be growing exponentially, but instead the pink population grows linearly and stops growing in relation to the other colors. There is a specific reason why this happened, but I want to keep this for another video, because, spoiler, there are a lot of things telling me I may not be really in control of what is going on. But there is still one experiment more to check. In the second experiment, these towers have different colors. You can see here the colors and the areas of influence overlapping. And this new artifact is creating new seeds to ensure there are always new plants trying to adapt to the first white tower. I did some simple tests that I didn't even record because right away I saw the plants were not moving from the initial spot. So I tilted the whole terrain and changed it to have the shape of a funnel to avoid the plants going around the towers. Then I made this test with some balls rolling down to discard any bias. All the balls run in a straight line and that confirms there is no tendency to move toward a specific site.
Now the only thing left to do is to keep this running for a few hours. And let's see what happened. You can see here they start moving in a straight line and basically force their way through the towers. There is little incentive for plants to go side to side so they just keep going at it. I kept this simulation running for 5 hours until the plants reach the bottom of the terrain and at that point they start to spread everywhere. It's time to check with the Leo if our predictions were correct. So a lot of seeds will die, we got that. We don't know which colors will get connected first. We assume they were going to be connecting and they were not connecting at all, they were just going straight forward. So we didn't thought about that. Will they get to the black tower? Yes, they did, but not because they were connecting through the towers, but because of gravity. Towers have to overlap. Yes, we have found that that indeed has some influence. It will be easier for plants to move to a similar color, not really once they are trade locked. Once they have low mutability, they don't really change color that much. I may mean, need to till the whole terrain completely. I have to do that right away. It's going to be very cool. Well, and there will be a lot of gray colors. Totally. We, we saw it were all grayish, orange, grayish, green, grayish, whatever. So we got five out of eight. Oh, oh. Really? <laughs> so there was another experiment, but it didn't work very well. Uh, in this third one, uh, I made a test to see if the plants can adapt to the influence of multiple towers. And long story short, they couldn't. We are not going to discuss it very much because I'm going to do that in a separate video because right. it was like really, really eye opening and it has evolved in its own video, which is going to be about evolution simulations are f***ing hard. <laughs> yeah, they sure are. That's the thing with evolution. You, you are not in control. <laughs> you are not in control. So what's the conclusion then? <laughs> I was expecting to have more clear results, like this was supposed to be, look, we can make really specific selection pressures and we will see the effects very clearly. And then it's like, nope, because my plants are so convoluted that you still need to, to make them viable on their own terms before they, yeah. they adapt to the towers. I think the model will influence so much how things will grow and like how things develop that I admit that maybe that's something that we underestimated. Yeah, I think I have to do more experiments to really understand all factors driving evolution dynamics in my simulation so I can be able to design the new plan model. Uh, the new plan model is going to be based on a DNA sequence. If you want to know more about that, you have to watch this video next. Thanks Leo for everything. Awesome. So thanks you Alejo. Bye.